first time in history, all four belts in the cruiserweight division will belong proudly around the waist of one man. WBC Super Bantamweight International title. Brilliant performance from Gavin McDonald. You watch that and you think, how was he four or five to one? I know. In the fight. Like you say, you don't bet, but you no. told your mates and they've had a few quid on it. But um, massive respect to both guys. Brilliant performance from Gavin McDonald. Respect to Gamal Yafai for taking a big step up with his team. And Gavin really proved to be world class tonight. Over to you guys for questions. Well, Gavin looked like you were the bigger and stronger guy throughout that. Did you feel like you bullied him a bit? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm always bigger and stronger. Do you know what I mean? In, in most fights other than the world title, I mean, you don't come bigger than me at, at super bantamweight. And um, I always knew I had the, the, the size, the reach, you know what I mean? The experience. Um, I had everything on him. Um, over, over, I don't know what the bookmakers seen, do you know what I mean? I don't know what they, they thought they were going to bring to the table. Um, but deep down, I knew, do you know what I mean? How it was going to go. Um, that didn't go differently than, than I knew it was going to. And um, it was one of them, it was a fight I needed and um, it's put me on the stage, you know what I mean, for 2018, set up, set up a big year. You rocked him a couple of times, did you think there was ever a point where you could have stepped it up and even stopped him or got him down at least? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I probably could have, could have done that but my, my coach was um, holding me back. Um, Gamal Yafai, he's got a bit of a dig and you can get a bit complacent, do you know what I mean? And if I'd have gone looking for it, it only takes one shot in boxing. And I were, I were, it, it, how I thought, I was were, I were beating him comfortably, do you know what I mean? Um, and um, just stick to how we want. And if it come, it come, um, do you know what I mean? And um, it was a good fight. Um, I heard him at times, do you know what I mean? And um, in the end, we got the win, and, and that's all that matters. How important for, was it for you to control the centre of the ring? And you were moving forward a lot throughout the fight as well. We've seen you on the back foot in the past, but you were constantly marching forward in this one. Yeah, he, he sort of went on back foot a bit. Um, I think he was a bit cagey about um, the distance and, and if he was going to gas. Um, do you know what I mean? And I don't know what it was, but um, he went on back foot um, and, and I sort of controlled it. Um, do you know what I mean? I thought I boxed well. Um, but yeah, it was it a good performance. Dave, what were you saying to Gavin throughout the fight? Just basically not let him, not let Yafai dictate. I wanted him to dictate with his jab. Whenever, on the end of, of Yafai's attacks, I wanted him to work and dig downstairs and, and tire him out because I knew, pace-wise, there's no way that Yafai was going to um, cope with, with Gavin. But he had to be smart with the jab. He had to just pick, pick, and, and be patient. Not walk into any traps because you could see what Gamal was trying to do. Um, I mean, there's nerves in every fight, big, big fight. Do you know what I mean? And like how the bookmakers had it and whatnot, and, and, and everybody else. Do you know what I mean? There were a lot of people thought he was gonna walk through me. Um, do you know what I mean? So it got me nerves. Do you know what I mean? Like um, but when I've got nerves, it, I perform at my best, and um, it was one of them tonight. I needed a big, a big win. And I, I think I, that's what I did. Did you expect to be as comfortable as what um, don't, don't get me wrong, it wasn't comfortable. Um, do you know what I mean? It, it was a tough it were a tough fight, but when I was in control all the way through, um, I thought I was switched on. It caught me with a few, we clashed heads. I think um, it, it was one of them fights where um, I was in control all the way through, but it were, it were a tough fight. Gamayi fight, there's not many fighters jump what do what he's done, do you know what I mean? Jump the levels, not just one level, but he, he, he's jumped from, from bottom to top and he hung in there, do you know what I mean? And um, you've got to give him credit. Um, he'll come again and he's a young lad and um, no doubt he'll, he'll get to where he needs to be. It looked like a career best performance from outside. Did you feel like that when you're in? Um, the thing is, I class myself as, as, as a, a level or two above, do you know what I mean? Because where I've been, um, to me, it were, it were a good win against a good name, an unbeaten fighter, and it was something I needed um, to set my year up, do you know what I mean? Profile, profile yeah, it, it's what I needed, and um, it, it just sets 2018 up, do you know what I mean? And, and hopefully we can just be in big fights, and then the world title will come. What is next? Well, I think, you know, he was, he's already ranked high in the WBC. Ray Vargas, I was saying to Dave earlier about his performance against Ray Vargas, although he lost on points, Ray Vargas is out there destroying everyone. Yeah. 
in the division right now looks a real talent. So that was, I feel that Gavin needed a fight like that. Pro fight, as a promoter and I guess matchmaker, I felt like they both did. You know, Gamal needed that big kind of fight to prove if he was ready for that level. Gamal need, uh, Gav needed that kind of fight to, to, you know, have the exposure and also to make a statement. And obviously Gavin moves on now. I'd like to see him fight for another world title. You know, um, domestically, there's not really a lot that I think is going to motivate him. So he's already won the European title. I think, you know, either some kind of former world champion or a big, big name or challenge for a world title. But I see him having two more fights, at least in 2018. You know, one in the summer and then have a break and then one in October, November. Perhaps that'll be for the world title. But at these McDonald brothers, they'll fight anyone. I mean, Jamie's going out, hopefully, to fight Inoue in Japan. Didn't even know who he was. Anyway, <laughs> he said he Googled him, but he couldn't find him. And Gavin just won't say no to a fight either. So they're a pleasure to work with in that respect. And you know, he was in the deep end tonight. And as Dave said in the interview, you know, Gamal Yafai is supposed to be, you know, this young gun coming through. And you know, it was a case tonight where you put two guys in. And you say, right, Gav, if you're a world class fighter, you'll win. And Gamal, if you're what we think you might be, you might win. And it was somewhere in the middle with Gamal being a very good fighter, but Gavin just being the levels above and the experience above tonight. And it was a really, really good performance. I, I say it was his career best performance because there was pressure, a lot of pressure, and he was against a young undefeated fighter who was 100% there to win. You know, and he's been in fights before where maybe guys don't quite have the desire and, you know, deep down, but against Gamal, you know, he was desperate to win. He had to win tonight and he couldn't do it. So, and Gavin made him do that, you know, and it was a really, strong performance of experience and size um, and skill and you know power at times as well and I, I thought it was by far the most I mean the Lee Wood win was a big win at the time yeah, yeah I yeah, mean that was yeah, yeah that was the one where he wasn't really expected to win and you know that was a major win but I still think the Gavin McDonald story is great because when you achieve things you never thought you would you're dangerous because you don't really give a monkeys like deep down you want it but you've got no fear <coughs> He has no fear at all. Like if he if he's not good enough to win, he takes it on the chin. He says, but there's no, you know, there's there's no sort of half-heartedness. He's I'm going to put everything into it. I've already achieved well beyond my expectations, so I can't lose. And when you're like that, you're a dangerous character. So anything's possible. And if he keeps improving the way this, shout out to Dave Coldwell, done a brilliant job again. You know, they work really well together. And um, you know, he's developing a career where he can look back on and be extremely proud, and it's not over yet. I've got a question for Dave. Dave, was that a performance of a fighter using his physical attributes of perfection? I mean, the way he used his jab? It, it was also a performance of a fighter using his discipline, because a lot of fighters can do things in the gym, and you see him, that he's, so many times you, you speak to trainers after a performance of a fighter, and they're disappointed because you've seen so much better in the gym, but what they do in the gym, they don't take it into, into their fighters. And what you're saying about his attitude, in the gym, if I ask him to try something, in sparring, if I ask him to try something and the first time it don't work and get clipped, he'll keep trying it, keep trying it until he gets it off. And that builds builds the, the ability, but it builds the confidence in order for him to take it into a ring. And then you're in the ring with somebody like Gamal Yafai who's, who's going in there to blow your head off. Make no mistakes about that. And he knew that. But he still got the confidence not to... We knew that they couldn't run. If you run and, and, and you're circling the ring and, and just flicking out a jab, Kamal's going to hunt you down and you get, you're going to get caught. But he had to control the distance and, and whether that was him going forward or just stepping back, he had to control the distance and kind of end up bullying him, you know, which took confidence. But that confidence came from the discipline in the gym and being able to take it into the, into the fight. Eddie, in terms of matching his relationship with Sky, how important is it for Gavin's career now to have an impressive win in a really entertaining fight? Well, there's the, it's so competitive in boxing right now. And that's one of the reasons Gamal had to take that fight. Because there aren't, you know, you have to step up and be in the fights that Sky and the fans say, I want to pay to see it. And fighters understand that, Gavin understands that. You know, the people, he sells a lot of tickets, people are tuning in, Sky are paying their money. They don't want to see fights that aren't interesting. And that was a really interesting fight and it ended up being a really good fight. So sometimes people might think, oh, well, you know, put Gavin McDonald a bit early there, but that it's my job to provide entertainment. Well, what we hope is entertainment, and these guys actually provide the entertainment. And without people who are willing to take the fights, the sport doesn't work. Because it just gets dull and you know and, and now you make a fight like McDonald's yeah, fight, everybody was looking forward to it. 
and it delivered, yeah. and it was a good fight, and the underdog won. So there was a story. So they're the kind of fights that we need to make. So for, for Gavin, he knows, you know, in terms of the pecking order, there's some huge superstars on TV. It's like, he never thought he'd end up being a TV fighter, changing for world titles. But he is, and whilst he keeps winning and producing performances like that, he stays, he stays alive and he stays relevant. And that's all you can ask to be. He's relevant. You know, his next fight is a big TV fight, decent money, belts, and that's it. It's all about living to fight another day. Right, gents, thank you very much. In history, all four belts in the cruiserweight division will belong proudly around the waist of one man.